Shalom, precious brothers and sisters. I pray that you're having an awesome day. It's May now, praise God, and it's beautiful. It's so sunny out. The skies are blue, and the trees are getting so green, and flowers are in. So it's just beautiful. I'm just grateful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful to be here. So the Lord is leading me to talk about humility today, which is one of my favorite subjects because I need a lot more humility. You know, a lot of us seem humble on the outside, but God knows our hearts, and we see our hearts. Um, to an extent and I know that I desire much more humility so I love discussing it and I am actively pursuing that in my own personal life so humility what is humility humility or humbleness or to be humble means a modest view of or a modest or a low view of one's own importance and that right there is pretty rare how many of us can say honestly that we have a modest or low view of our own importance isn't it usually quite the opposite don't we usually um, our natural tendency is to want people to know how important we are our natural tendency is to want people to know how smart we are how attractive we think we are how successful we are that's our natural tendency but to be truly humble means we view low how important we are to others or how important we are to anybody so what are some practical qualities what does it look like to be humble and then we'll discuss discuss some scriptures and examples in the Bible so to be humble means for one you don't brag you don't feel the need to brag about your accomplishments or how awesome you are or all the amazing things happening in your life you don't feel the need to do that another thing you don't talk too much about yourself. You don't feel the need to talk on and on about what's happening with you, what you've done, what you're doing, what you're going to do. It's not necessary. You'd rather give the other person the floor to speak about themselves. Another quality of being humble is you don't talk yourself up. You don't feel the need to, um, to add to add to what kind of person you are, to add what you, um, to what you've been doing or what you'll be doing. Another thing about being humble, you are open to the idea that you may be wrong. Some people have such an issue with pride, which is the opposite of humility, that they really have a hard time admitting that they're ever wrong. I'm sure we all know somebody or some people who um, they can't even apologize. It's hard for them to say sorry. That is a lack of humility. Being humble means you're willing to admit you are wrong and you made a mistake. It also means being teachable. Being teachable means you are willing to learn from others, even those who we would think are lower than us, in quotes, lower than us, or not as intelligent as us, or not as successful as us. Being teachable means we are willing to learn from anybody who has something to offer. That's a quality of humility. Another thing, I don't have to prove how much I know. I have met people in my life, and I have sometimes been like this, and I've had to repent, where I feel that I need to prove how much I know, how smart I am in a conversation. That's not right. That's not appropriate. Um, another one is another quality of humility is not having the been there, done that attitude. My husband and I used to have a friend in California. We love him. We miss him. But he had this attitude where any story we told he's done it better he's done it longer he he's he's um, been through that situation more intensely than we have it's that been there done that attitude that is not humility that's pride and nobody wants to tell a story if, if the other person's always going to one-up them that's not cool so in numbers 12 3 now Moses was a very humble man, more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. Moses was so humble. God called him the most humble man on the face of the earth. Why? Why was he so humble? Well, for one thing, if we read about Moses' history, Moses was rescued out of a basket from the river, and he was raised in Pharaoh's household by Pharaoh's daughter. Pharaoh was the king of Egypt. So he was raised in the king's palace by Pharaoh's daughter. Moses was in an environment where he had he was provided and surrounded by the best of foods, the best of clothing, no doubt the nicest, most palatial home in the country, the best education one could offer, you know, probably the highest quality soaps and cleaning products. Moses was exposed and provided the best of everything. And yet, 
Moses chose to separate himself from that environment and he realigned himself. He wanted to get back with his own people, the Israelites, the Jewish people. And the Israelites at that time were slaves and they were looked down upon. They were mocked and ridiculed and treated horribly, but he identified with them. That's humility. He didn't feel the necessity to stay attached to the Egyptians and the king's home where he was raised. He left all that to be a part of his own people, the Israelites. And beyond that, once God began raising Moses up, you know, God used him to um, bring the ten plagues upon Egypt. God used him to split the Red Sea in half. God used Moses to perform many miracles and Moses was the leader of the Israelites as they left Egypt heading for the promised land. Yet if you read the story of Moses, he never gloried in himself. He never took credit for any of the miracles or any accomplishments that, the, that God had, had um, brought through the Israelites through Moses. He was so humble. He always gave all glory back to God. Moses knew that everything he was and everything he would ever be was because of God. That's humility. That's what we need to have, that we would be humble, that we would never glory in our accomplishments, that we would never um, try to take credit for what's not ours to take. Anything we're ever going to accomplish, anything we'll ever be, anything we'll ever do is because of God and His grace and His mercy. I read a quote once, Andrew Murray said, humility rejoices in being counted the least. And that has really convicted me because I ask myself, do I rejoice in being counted the least? That's a hard question. When, when we are overlooked, when we are mistreated, when we are misunderstood or looked down upon, do we rejoice? Because the reason why it's, it's considered a, a, something to rejoice over is because Jesus said that um, he who um, brings himself low, he will exalt. We want to be able to identify with Jesus and Jesus was the most of course the bible says moses was the most humble of all but who was our pro, who was our primary example of who to follow in the bible jesus jesus was overlooked jesus was mistreated jesus was misunderstood jesus was looked down upon nobody has those had those issues more than jesus if we can identify with him even a little bit then praise god because it's helping to change us and shape us and mold us to be more like him so may we get each to the place where we can rejoice in being counted the least. It's okay. We don't have to be top dog. We don't have to be recognized as the best or the coolest or the fastest or the prettiest or the most handsome or whatever. In Philippians 2 verse 8, speaking about Jesus, it says, And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Jesus was so humble. He... Moses lived in a palace, but Jesus came from heaven. Jesus lived in heaven, surrounded by angels, seeing the glory of the Father all the time, the most beautiful, amazing things around him all the time that we can't even begin to understand until we get to heaven. But he chose to be a servant. He left that in obedience to his Father. He left that out of love, and he was born in a dirty, stinky manger surrounded by farm animals with all their smells and all their dirt. He was born through his humble mother, Mary, and he lived his perfect life on, on the earth and he died on the cross for our sins. He allowed um, the mockers to spit on him, to put a crown of painful crown of thorns on his head. He allowed them to pluck at his beard. He was naked. And then he allowed them to nail his hands and his feet to a cross, which was at that time the most painful way to die, the most painful way. He allowed himself to go through that because he was so humble and he had such love for us. He could have come down from that cross at any point. He even said he could call down legions of angels right there and ask them to take him off that cross, but he chose not to because of his humility. Nobody was more humble than Jesus, and that's our example. He was the King of kings and the Lord of lords, but he chose to stay on that cross because of his love his great love for us, his humility. Mark 9, 35, sitting down, Jesus called the 12 and said, anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. That is a great sign of humility, being a servant. So I have an example. Um, what I worked years ago in, um, in California, in a town called Bakersfield, California, um, I worked in a sports store and um, one of the managers came and said, 
hey, somebody had an accident in the bathroom. I need one of you, one of you to clean up the bathroom. And an accident, okay, that means that somebody either peed or pooped on the floor or somewhere, everywhere but where they're supposed to. So our initial reaction, me and the other workers were, well, none of us wanted to do it, but I just knew I was a new Christian. I just knew God was telling me, you do it. I didn't want to, but that's being a servant. Are we willing to do the dirty jobs? Are we willing to do um, the things that perhaps other people don't want to do? Even the people at our church, the people who are willing to clean the bathrooms, that's humility. Some people are willing to vacuum. Some people are willing to, um, you know, make bulletins for their church. But the people who are willing to clean the bathrooms and do the yucky stuff. And by the way, that bathroom at the sports store, it was nasty. <laughs> So I won't go into details, but you can imagine it was bad. But I did it. And you know what? I knew it pleased the Lord. It was a good lesson for me. James 4, verse 6. God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. God opposes the proud. He does not like proud people. It, it, it turns them away. God shows favor to humble people, always. As another example, um, when I see, this is just a silly thing with me perhaps, but when I see somebody driving a really nice sports car, I know it's wrong and I shouldn't, but I kind of assume that maybe they're, they're um, arrogant or prideful about their vehicle. And I know that not all people who have really nice cars are like that. I know that. I know some people who have really nice cars and they're not like that. But because I assume that most people are, I make it a point when I am passing the driver of that car, I look away. I purposely don't let them see me oogling and googling over their car because I don't want to feed that pride. It's just the same thing. God opposes the proud, but he shows favor to the humble. So the opposite, like I said, of humility is pride. Pride is defined as a feeling or deep pleasure or satisfaction derived from one's own achievements, the achievements of those with whom one is closely associated or from qualities or possessions that are widely admired. So in other words, you're proud of things you've done. You, you feel proud about people you hang with. Let's say you feel pride because I hang with so-and-so or I'm friend, friends with so-and-so. That's still pride. Or pride about qualities or possessions that are white. You feel prideful that um, that you're admired for things that you have or things that you, you've done or the way you look. Those are all elements of pride. As an example in the Bible, King Saul. King Saul was very disobedient in the Bible. Um, he was told, God told the prophet Samuel to tell King Saul to extinguish all of the Amalekites, all of them, the entire town. He chose to not completely extinguish them. And the root reason was pride. King Saul felt that his plan was better than God's. And that's pride. And how often have we done the same thing? How often have we told God, yeah, I know you told me to do that, but you know what? I have a better idea. That's pride. And pride can lead to so many problems. So many problems. In fact, in the Bible, the king's spirit of pride is, is called Leviathan. You can read that about that in Job 41. Proverbs 16 verse 18 says, Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. And unfortunately, if you read the story of King Saul, he had a horrible fall. Horrible. It affected much of his family as well. His kingdom was destroyed. It was very sad, very tragic. James 4.10 says, Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. Are we waiting? This, is, this scripture is a good self-assessment scripture for us. Are we waiting for recognition? Are we waiting for promotion? Are we waiting and just, just chomping at the bit for acknowledgement and man's praise? I know I've done that many times. I still struggle with that some. Thankfully, it's less than it used to, but we all need to strive for humility where we don't need recognition from others. We don't need promotion. No title matters. It doesn't matter what kind of position we hold. Where are we at with God? What does he think of us? We want to get to the place where we don't need to be acknowledged. We don't need that pat on the back from other people. We don't need man's praise or that attaboy. As long as we are pleasing the Lord, that's what matters. Humility means that we're not looking for other people to, um, to attaboy us, to encourage us. We're looking for that from the Lord. As an example, I'll be transparent. When I got to my new church, because I'd been in ministry before, I wanted them to know how, how much I knew. I mean, not that I brag about it all the time, but I'm talking about my heart, where my attitude was. I wanted them to know what I knew. I wanted them to know 
um, how godly I was. I wanted them to know what my gifts were. I wanted recognition and you know what? That was wrong and I've repented and God has dealt with a lot of that. Have I totally arrived? No, none of us will totally arrive until we get home, but we can strive and try to be more humble and more humble. It's a process. And one last thing I want to say about humility is I encourage you all, have an attitude of humility when you pray. Pray on your knees or even laying down. It's, it's even a, a position, a posture of humility where we are telling God, I don't have it all under control. You're in control, Lord. I give it all to you. When we are praying on our knees and having truly an attitude of humility before him, God will honor that. God will elevate us. God will promote us. God will provide us the recognition we deserve in his timing, in his timing. As we show that we are humble, it says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. As we humble ourselves and learn to stop relying on other people's praise or attention or validation, he will lift us up in his timing. In the details of this video, I'm going to include a few songs that sing about humility. Some of them might not be your style, but um, they're each a blessing, they're each anointed song. So if they bless you, praise God, or maybe you could pass on the song to somebody else. Um, so I'm gonna pray and then we'll be done for the day. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for being so awesome. You were the servant of all. We thank you for your examples in the Bible. So many examples of humility, Moses, and the Apostle Paul, and many of your disciples, and so many amazing examples, God, of humility. I pray, God, that we would learn to wear humility as a cloak, that it would wrap around us all the time, that, God, you would displace and remove from us more and more pride, that we would repent of pride, that, God, when we see pride in our hearts, that we would repent and let it go, that we would ask you to forgive us, that we would repent, that we would even go to others and apologize where we need to, but that, God, we would just resist. The Bible says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. God, that we would resist that pride, that we would actively fight against it, and that, Lord, we would learn humility, that you would even lead us to scriptures on humility, that we would do word studies and Bible studies on humility. Lord, we need to study to show ourselves approved, a workman who needs not be ashamed. God, that we would study humility. It's not just going to mysteriously appear. We need to pursue it. The Bible says we have not because we ask not. So God, help us to ask you and to seek you diligently for humility. That is, an ev is evidence of a strong Christian, humility. It's rare. And we don't want to be a part of the majority. Lord, we want to be a part of the minority. Help us to be humble, Father. Help us to be humble. Help us to be like Jesus. You were the most humble. And so we love you. We praise you. We honor you. We thank you that you are developing humility, humility in us. We thank you that as we're becoming more aware of it, it's giving you the chance to do this work in our hearts. We love you so much. We praise you, Father. We speak all these things in great faith. In Jesus' name, amen. So I speak blessings over every one of you. You are in my prayers. If you like this video, if you could subscribe and um, to my channel and like the video, God bless you. I will be back next week. I speak blessings over every one of you. In Jesus' name, amen.